Coach Ball, it's great to talk with you. Welcome to Flagstaff. Welcome to Northern Arizona University football. Tell me a little bit about the path to Flagstaff. How did you get from Memphis, Tennessee to Flagstaff, Arizona? What was that journey like? Well, you know, it started with Mike Marlowe. You know, we had a, a relation, a previous relationship from Washington State. When I was a GA there back in 1989, he was working in the athletic department as in student assistant. And our paths crossed there. We really didn't know each other very well, but uh, it was me, Kevin Sumlin, were GAs there at the same time, and uh, Mike was there. And then uh, when I had gone back there the, the second time, uh, he, he was in the athlete, working in the athletic department. And, you know, started with him, and you know, when this process started going, he'd contact me, wanted to know if I was interested, and I'd known about the job for a long time, being out here in the Pacific Northwest. Always thought it was a great, great job, great opportunity to to, to change lives and win lots of football games, and a great school academically, great location. Um, and then when I was coaching at Arizona State, uh, we'd come up here in the, in the summertime, me and my family, and uh, spend some time here in Flagstaff, and was always uh, like, wow, what a great place to live and great place to, to great quality of life. And so uh, the process started going and Marlo, Mike Marlowe asked me a question, hey, would you be interested? And I, I said, before I even finished, I said yes. Hmm. And uh, luckily it worked out and uh, it got a little hairy there towards the end. You know, I didn't know what was gonna happen at Memphis and uh, with Coach Norvell moving on and uh, what was what they were going to do at Memphis, and well, Coach Norvell ended up staying, and then I thought this was probably the best opportunity for me to be a head football coach at a, a place that you've got a chance to win lots of games and a chance to, to influence some lives. You know, Chris, you've talked about this right from the very first moment you stepped into Flagstaff and, and stood up in front of the crowd at your welcoming press conference, but you talk about how NAU football as a program is a program that you had your eye on, and you touched on that a moment ago, but I want you to unpack that a little bit. What is it about this football program at this university that makes you think that this is ready to go off the launching pad? Well, I think uh, it starts with President Chang, you know, as the commitment, you know, as the commitment level here. Um, and then Mike Marlowe, you know, uh, a lot of people, you know, programs, schools win because of the administration first, because there has to be a commitment to allow the coaching staff to do the things that they want to do for their players and for the program. And uh, they had a, a vision of what they wanted. Uh, I was lucky enough to fit that vision. And um, now there's a major commitment to win championships here. And um, before that, though, I had to see if there was a major commitment to change the lives of our student athletes, which they convinced me there was. And uh, in order to do that, you've got to have resources. You know, you've got to have the, the, the right people in the academics piece and in the, the weight room piece and being able to hire my coaching staff. You know, there's a lot that goes into it. And that starts with administration. And they've done a tremendous job of, 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 of giving us those, those, uh, the, the, those avenues to get that stuff done. And uh, uh, that was first and foremost. And then obviously, you know, the, the opportunity to win championships, you know, it's, uh, great location, uh, you're, you're here in a great city, great community. The school is, is very well respected across the country and within the state and, and in the southwest region. Um, we have great academic programs. Uh, we have exceptional facilities. We have a, a beautiful, beautiful campus. We got our recruiting base is, is good in the state of Arizona and we've got Southern California. And, uh, you know, the, the, all those things, it's never just one thing, you know, it's, it's accumulation of things that, that builds a championship program, but things are in place, you know, and, and uh, I don't know if they had been in place before then, you know, I don't know that, but I know now I'm convinced that they are, they've convinced me of that and they've proven that and uh, they're going to give us every opportunity to change lives and win football games. Now, for those of you watching at home, you know that this is a standard interview question for a new head football coach, <laughs> or any sport for that matter. But coach, you have to have a coaching tree. Coaches that you have coached with or coached for in your career that have left uh, an indelible mark in you and have helped shape you into the coach that you are today as the head coach at NAU. Who would that be? Well, you know, it starts with my dad. He's the one that got me in the profession. You know, he was a high school and 
head high school coach for a long time and head college coach. Uh, and uh, he got me in, in, in the profession and uh, it rings in my ears every morning I wake up. He says, you do this for the right reasons. And do for the reasons because you got a chance to make a difference in a young man's life and help him accomplish the goals that he has. And uh, I've kept that philosophy through the years and sort of something that has kept me consistent in my, co in my coaching philosophy. And uh, the, the guys that have made impact, they've all, everybody I've worked for has impacted me, you know, in, in all ty types of different ways. Um, you know, I start, you know, Mike Price has been a big influence. Um, you know, uh, the defensive coordinator and eventually the head coach of Washington State, uh, Bill Doba, has been a big influence. And I can just go down the line. Everybody that I've worked for has really made a difference, you know, in, 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 in my coaching career. And I've, I've taken things from everybody. Um, but, uh, you know, the, I've been lucky to work for some quality, quality people. You know, uh, Mike Shulett, Alabama, um, Dave Wanstead. Uh, Todd Graham, uh, Mike Norvell, um, Skip Foster, you go all the way back to, you know, he's the guy that gave me my first opportunity at Coffeyville Junior College. He, he made a difference, Blaine Bennett, you know, all the guys that I've worked for as they have impacted me. And uh, I wouldn't be here w without having those guys in my life. And, uh, and I've taken a little bit from each one of them. And at the end of the day, I've been blessed to work for quality, quality people quality people, guys that want to make a difference. And uh, I've just sort of stuck with that. And um, it's so far, it's worked out. You've mentioned your dad both in this interview right now, and you've mentioned him several times as you've introduced yourself here to NAU football fans and the, the alumni and the university's constituency. You've talked about your dad as, as having a very big influence on who you are as a man today. By the same token, you're having the opportunity as a dad to have a very big influence on your son, who's a part of this staff. Being able to generationally move this down the ladder like this from your father to you and now your son on this staff has got to be something pretty special. Yeah, you know, and the hardest thing is not to take that for granted every day. You know, the fact I get to come to work every day and work with him is special. Yeah. You know, and. He done, I'm so proud of him. He's done a tremendous job, tremendous job. You know, he, he played, uh, went to Washington State. Uh, when we got hired at Arizona State, he, he, he stayed a couple more years at Washington State, then came down to Arizona State and started as a student assistant. And Coach Graham hired him and has just gotten better every, every year. And uh, then Coach Norvell, he came as my GA to uh, Memphis. And then uh, Coach Norvell made him the player personnel recruiting coordinator and uh, has just done a tremendous job with organization and, and there's probably a lot more on his plate than what I told him there was going to be All right. uh, but I can do that because I'm his dad <laughs> but it's uh, executive privilege yeah exactly not only am I the head coach I'm your father That's so right. you do what I say <laughs> and uh, but it's been awesome you talk about special you know to be able to have your son uh, sit there with you and help you build a program I mean that's that's something that I, I just, I got to remind, pinch myself every morning. It's like, man, how lucky am I to be able to come to work and work with, with my son every day. And, uh, you know, sometimes a little rocky, yeah. you know, but, you know, it would be rocky with somebody else. In that Father and season. son That's relationships. Exactly right. are, yeah, they, they can go up, they can go down. That's they can exactly have their right. good moments. They can have their interesting moments. That's exactly right. But it's been, it's been awesome. And I'm, I'm just really, really proud of how hard he, what a great job he's done really good job. Coach, you have spoken more times than I can count in just the handful of months you've been here in Flagstaff about changing lives. In fact, I would say I hear you talking more about changing lives than I hear you talk about coaching in a way. This is a very important part of you as a football coach, isn't it? Yeah, because, you know, I think, you know, we, we, we got this great game and it's so easy to get caught up in the wins and losses. And, and, and I know, I get it. You know, I grew up in this profession, I get it. You know, we're judged on wins and losses. At the end of the day, people really don't, at the end of the day, don't really care how many lives I change. But what a great, great platform to take a young man and be able to spend the next the four years with him and help him accomplish every goal he has, or try to, and through this great game of football. 
and help him understand that, that what it takes to be great at anything, to be a good husband, to be a good father, to, to make a lot of money someday in the business world, is that it takes hard work. And you can use this game to, 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 as an example. And, uh, you know, they come here with, with, with big dreams. You want to accomplish those big dreams, you're going to have to work hard. And it's not going to be easy. And uh, through this game, I think, you know, what a great, great opportunity. Because you got their attention. Because they love football. They understand that the, the window to play football is very, very small. And I remind them every day. You see, at the, end of the, at the end of the day, you know, you're going to have to quit playing this game someday. And uh, what are you going to do afterwards? You know, and I'm more proud for my ex-players when they call me and tell me, hey, I'm getting married. Right. Um, I just got a job promotion. I'm having my first kid. Da 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 da. I mean, those things are very important to me. And you know, success to me is you know the kid comes plays for us here at Northern Arizona, and he's still texting and communicating with us at five years after he's done, and he's had, he had a great experience. And uh, our relationship is, is, is we've accomplished something. And uh, but it, that I think at the end of the day. If those kids know that you're trying to do best for them, mm -hmm. that they're going to play hard for you. And uh, we, yesterday, you know, we, we had some guys with some bad body language, and I said, you know, we're not trying to disrespect you, but we're trying to teach you that, hey, it's not going to be easy. Yeah. All right. And how you respond to adversity is sometimes going to determine how the outcome. And sometimes you make a bad decision that could be really affect your life and things aren't going to be easy, you're right? you know, and you've got to learn how to fight through adversity because you're still going to have to perform no matter what it is. You're still going to have to show up and be a husband the next day. You're still going to have to show up and be a father the next day. You're still going to have to show up and go to work the next day. And uh, the best way to do it is, is to flush it and, and move on to the next play. Mm -hmm. And and I said, it has nothing to do with disrespect. We would be disrespecting our players if we did not hold our players accountable. Mm -hmm. And that's how we serve our players. We serve our players by holding them accountable every day. We set the standard and we hold them that standard every day. And uh, the great thing about kids between 18 and 22 years old, they will meet that standard. But you just got to hold them accountable every day. And that's life. Mm -hmm. That's life. I mean, you, you got to show them go to work every day. You got a family to feed. You got, you got people to take care of. And uh, uh, the greatest thing about that, when your feet hit that floor in the morning, you decide on how you're going to be every day. You decide, no matter what's happened to you. And, uh, but you've got responsibilities. And there's a, everybody, you know, well, you know, this, everybody's got issues. That's life. That's normal. That's normal. And to use this game to teach them that and how to battle through adversity and how to fight through it and show up every day and, and understand that, hey, if you want to be great at anything, it's going to take some hard work. And, uh, that, I've just stuck with that, and you know the wins will come. Mm -hmm. You know if you, you stick with that philosophy, and these kids believe that you, you, you're, you're watching out for them and you're doing best for them, uh, they're going to play hard for you. And uh, at the end of the day, it's more than just X's and O's. You know you've got to have a relationship with these young men, and uh, they've got to know you know why they're running through the wall for you. Uh, you to over, in order to coach them hard. Mm -hmm. You've got to have a relationship with them. If you don't have a relationship with them, then it's personal. Then it's personal. But if they understand what you're trying to get done and it's in their best interests, then they'll run through a brick wall for you. You know, it's easy in life to react well to things that are going well for you. That's the easy part. The difficult part is how you react when, when you're faced with some serious challenges or adversity or, or hurdles that are standing in front of you blocking you from point A to point B no in your question. life, and, and, and you're speaking to that directly. What about your philosophy about who you look for in your coaches? One of the things you had to do when you walked in the door in Flagstaff in December was hire a coaching staff. What types of coaches were you looking for? Well, it was the NAU Nation would be shocked. When I got the job, within about five days, I had over 800 texts hmm. of people wanting to Wanting a job. Wanting a job. And um, obviously you got, got 10 spots, <laughs> you know. And, and a lot of people over 35 years of coaching college football, I've, I've got a lot of names, you know. And uh, people, not only names of the people that I know really well, but also people are trying to recommend people that they know really well. Right. And uh, 
my deal was I wanted to hire the guys that coach for the same reason that I coach. I interviewed guys, talked to a lot of guys, and if it ended up being a conversation more about football, X's and O's, that guy probably isn't my guy, uh, wasn't my guy. Uh, if a guy said, hey, I coach for change lives, make a difference in a young man's life, that guy I'm really interested in. Um, and that was the process. I, I was very lucky to be hire, to hire uh, a handful of guys that I had great relationships with. Um, and they sacrificed a lot to, to come here. You know, Some of them have left their families behind and some of them took some major pay cuts to come here um, due just to our relationship. And uh, I was fortunate enough to get some quality, quality men first and quality, quality football coaches in the same deal. And uh, the relationship part, our relationship as a staff is, is important to me because I want to change their lives. Mm -hmm. You know, I want them to be successful. I want to help them accomplish their Your goals. assistant coaches. Yeah. yeah. I want them to, you know, they want to be a head coach. I want to do everything I can to help them be a head coach. If they want to be a, a power five defensive coordinator, I want to help them do that. You know, that's, that's part of this also. That's one thing great about being a head football coach is not only you're impacting the whole football team, but you're also impacting the, 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 the coaching staff. And, but I looked for great men first, husbands, you know, uh, fathers, uh, guys that want to change young people's lives. That was the first quiet criteria. And um, there are a lot of guys in our profession that are like that. You know, there's a lot of them. And uh, I was fortunate enough to get a great, great group of men that, that believe in the same things I believe in and they, they know, understand what work, how to work. And, and they're fun to be around. Uh, hopefully uh, the people, uh, you know, the NAU nation gets to know them very well and uh, they're, they're very outgoing and uh, uh, are very, very excited to be here at Flagstaff. And while you have your son on the staff, you are retaining the two flu grads, father and son, Aaron Flugrad, who is your offensive coordinator, and his father, Robin Flugrad, mm -hmm. uh, who were both on this staff last season, having another set of father and sons that you are able to keep on that coaching staff makes this a, a very uh, familial coaching staff, does mm -hmm. it not? Yes. There's four of us on the staff that coached at Washington State when we went to the Rose Bowl. Mm -hmm. And so there's a tight bond there just from the great experience we had coaching with Coach Price and the su success we had at Washington State. You know, we won 30 games in three years and uh, went to the Rose Bowl and uh, played Texas in the Holiday Bowl. And, so there was, you know, there was some, um, uh, there's a relationship there. I've known Aaron Flugrad since he was 12 years old. In fact, he used to babysit Brennan. Uh, How about that? Yeah, and so there was some really, really close-knit relationships that, that there's some strong relationships on the staff. Uh, uh, but to hire Robin, you know, Robin was the first guy I talked to and I wanted him to stay around, be the assistant head coach. And, but I got a lot of respect for Robin, not only as a, a person and a coach, but as a friend. And then obviously Aaron, you know, Aaron, you know, I wanted him to, you know, at first I wasn't gonna hire him as the offense coordinator, you know, and went down the convention and, you know, I told him I was gonna interview other people. He said, just give me an opportunity. I said, okay, I'll, then if I do that, I want you to coach wide receivers. And he came back and said, well, just give me an opportunity to coach quarterbacks. I said, all right, I'm gonna interview you like everybody else. And, Interviewed six guys and um, spent a whole day from 7 o'clock, 7.30 in the morning to about 7.30 at night at the National Convention and interviewing guys in my hotel room and got up the next morning, interviewed three more and uh, Aaron was one of them. And, you know, I, to be honest with you, I was look, I had some other people in mind and uh, Aaron came in there and, and just absolutely blew it out of the water. And so it was an easy decision. And, uh, but the, that was relationship there, you know, it's nice to have guys around you that are that you're really close with, but you need guys around you to be honest with you, because who holds me accountable? Right. Well, you know my my boss is, is is Mike Marlow. Well, you know Mike Marlow's not around here every day, so I need somebody that that is comfortable enough to walk in there and say, hey, you need to, this is what I think you should do, or when you ask them, they give you an honest opinion, not just something that you want to hear. I was lucky enough to hire my uh, college roommate, Jerry Partridge, our defense coordinator. So I lived with him for four years at Missouri Western. And 
he was the, uh, he hired me when he got the head coaching job at Missouri Western, and then I was lucky enough to get hire him. He's the all-time winningest coach at Missouri Western, Missouri Western history. So he knows me probably as good as anybody. And then Aaron Price, I've known Aaron Price since 1989. Um, so I mean, there's some tight type relationships in there. Bob Conley, we've been talking about coaching to get uh, doing this forever. Me being the head coach, or him being a head coach, and us working together and. Uh, Bob, you know, his last college job was USC. You know, Bob's coach at USC, UCLA, Arizona State, Alabama, Washington State, uh, and he is as good as offensive line coaches as there is in the country. And uh, he sacrificed a lot to come here too. So, you know, the, the, the relationship part of it was big to me, uh, but you also got to have some new ideas, you know, and people that you don't know to bring in there. And we, we did a did a good job with uh, bringing in a good mixture of uh, Guys that have recruited different areas. That was another thing I looked at is, you know, who's recruited Southern California. Uh, I called, gosh, five to ten people about who was the best recruiter in Southern California right now that was available. And Junior Tanavasa was the name that I got. And so I got him to help in Southern California. And then, you know, I hired some young guys, you know, Junior Taylor, who grew up in Mesa, Arizona, who's got some Arizona connections, played at UCLA. Tremendous, tremendous football coach. Uh, graduated UCLA, started charter schools for eight years, decided that wasn't what he wanted to do. He wanted to coach, got into coaching, and is just a tremendous football coach and does a great job with our kids. So then I got to hire some young guys, you know, Everett, Everett Thompson, you know, and then Jerry I needed, you know, another guy we hired that I think the world of is Jesse Thompson, coach our secondary. You know, he was Jerry's secondary coach at Delta State for two years. and. So the, the guys we got, first of all, was, you know, hey, why do you coach? Change lives. That's what I wanted to hear. And then the other thing, you know, recruiting uh, relationships uh, with me and some of the other guys on the staff. Uh, but we are a close-knit group of guys. And uh, some days aren't easy because we'll disagree, but, you know, we're, we walk out of that meeting room, we're all on the same page, and we can trust each other. There's nobody on our staff that has a different agenda. We're all on the same page. And uh, nowadays that's rare. That's really rare. Recruiting philosophy. Let's talk a little bit about that. The players that you're looking for to be lumberjack football players. How important is it for this university to recruit this state, the state of Arizona? That's the most important thing. You know, when I took the job, that was one of the attractive parts of this job was uh, the fact that you had a good recruiting base in the state of Arizona. And so we are going to smother mm. the state of Arizona. We, we feel that there's plenty of football players in the state to help us win championships. And, you know, we're looking for character first, uh, smart, uh, work ethic, toughness, and talent. You know, if you're just recruiting guys on talent, those guys don't tend to get any better. You know, but guys that are talented with character, that are smart, have a great work ethic, and are tough, are going to get better or figure out a way to get better. And uh, there's plenty of those kids in the state of Arizona. Uh, we're fortunate enough to have uh, Southern California really close. Mm -hmm. So we'll dip, dip into there. And then we talk about it, you know, any other place there's a relationship, you know, we might, you know, spot recruit. But our main, our main areas, there are going to be two days in the spring that we are going to recruit We'll have 11 coaches out in the state of Arizona. I heard something about this. Yeah. I mean, you're literally smothering the state of Arizona yes. over the course of two days with all of your coaches going out and literally fanning out across the Grand Canyon state. What, what, tell me about this. Well, we just, we, you know, we just want to show everybody that there's a commitment here to, to recruit the state mm -hmm. and uh, that we're going to turn over every stone. And, 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 you know, also, too, part of that is building relationships with the high school coaches. Mm -hmm. Uh, and we got to show them that we're committed, you know, and we also got to educate them that, hey, this is a high level of football, that the, the, the players that you recommend and the players that, that, that you want us to, to recruit have got to be quality football players. And so part of that is building relationships, educating the, the, the state on what we're trying to get done here and uh, showing the, the, the state that we're committed. We're committed to recruiting the state and uh, doing this with Arizona kids. 
Chris, you've talked about this a little bit in terms of the recruiting piece, but it's something that I've seen over 30 years in Flagstaff. We've had other Big Sky Conference schools recruit Arizona mm -hmm. pretty darn hard over the last 30 plus years, and in some cases have won the recruiting battles. The Montanas, the Weber States, the Montana States. You've mentioned that, that mm -hmm. that's not acceptable to you, mm -mm. isn't it? No, not acceptable. And you know, there's a reason why that, that uh, we didn't like that kid or didn't take him or recruit him, um, then I want to know, you mm -hmm. know, is it a character flaw? Is it a work ethic flaw? Is it you know, a toughness flaw? What is it? Let me know. Um, if we're head to head and we, we've offered the kid and we won, we should get him. Mm -hmm. We should get him. We shouldn't lose that kid to uh, uh, an opponent in our league. Speaking quickly of the opponents in the league, how do you see the Big Sky Conference? It's as good as there is in the country. Mm -hmm. At by the, far. At, really? Yeah. At the FCS level, you yeah, put it's it as right good up there as it the is in the country. Everybody wants to say Missouri Valley Football yeah. Conference, but it's, you're saying it's, Big it's Sky. As good, it's as good as there is in the country. And you know, I, I'm, I'm, I've known a lot of the coaches in this league for a long, long time, mm -hmm. and it is as good as there is in the country, if not the best. 